It's you, it's me, it's the Able Carry Daybreaker Review. This is a pack that is advertised as an ultra light activity pack. But is it the ultra light activity pack for you? That's what we're gonna discuss. My name's Aaron, the guy behind the camera is Tav. When our powers combine, we create No Imagination, the best channel that reviews things that carry other things. So if you carry things in things, subscribe. Notification bell. Let's talk about the Able Carry Daybreaker. Okay, let's give like an overall gist of this backpack. Like, what are you? Tell us your story. Well, I'm ultra light and I'm made with premium materials. I'm from Hong Kong and I have a complicated relationship with my father. <laughs> because that's what this bag is, an ultra light activity bag. Hiking, rock climbing, cycling, sporting, whatever it is, whatever activity you like, and you're just looking for something super light and super streamlined to live your active lifestyle, this is a great pack for that and for you. It comes in two color options. We got a black and a gray. The gray, this guy right here, as you see before you, uses X-Pack materials, which is like this crisscross sort of external material. Highly water resistant, highly rip resistant. It's the same material that sailboats use for their sail cloth. That's this. And the gray version runs around 125 US dollars. It should be noted though, there is also a black version. The black version is made with Cordura Ripstop Nylon and it comes in at 108 US dollars. But while it's like a hiking activity bag, what we like about it is it's not just, it doesn't scream, I'm a hiking bag. It's not like an old school like Osprey pack where if you saw it in a city, you'd be like, that dude just climbed down from a mountain probably. This is a bag that you can just kind of use as an everyday carry. It's functional. It doesn't give off like too hardcore of a hiker vibe. But then when you hit the trail, bro, this ticks all of the like activity boxes that you need it to tick. Let's talk about the front of the Able Carry Day Breaker. It's gonna be a fast section. Let's start by talking about these external lash points. External lash points are great um, for hooking on like a carabiner too. And then you clip on the carabiner and then you can clip something else below the carabiner. So it's an extra way to carry more stuff. And if you love carabiners, you'll be smitten to know there are more external lash points here at the bottom. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then two more at the bottom here. Should be noted though, I think we got a defective one because this lash point right here, the stitching came undone as easy as like putting a hot knife through a stick of butter. Now we, this is the fourth Able Carry pack we've reviewed and their quality is top notch. And we accept the fact that defects happen. There's always a bad apple. So I'm not gonna it on Able Carry too much for this. This is definitely something that should be covered under the warranty. And as you can see on the other side, we tried to replicate the problem. We tried to Talk about it, do it. And like, if we're trying to even like show you like on the other side, let me try and replicate the problem. This is a pretty sturdy pencil. Ow! Huh? You do it with one hand. Yeah, okay. Go. Tab's gonna break the pencil with one hand. I challenge you. I don't think he's gonna be able to do it. Do it from this angle. You're fine. All right. Wait, wait. You're in. Go. Hercules, Hercules. All right. So as you can see, the pencil broke. The lash point survived. Thanks for sacrificing your pencil, Tav. That was his favorite pencil. Next up, let's talk about the middle of the pack. We've got a water bottle pocket right here. Got a couple holes at the bottom in case your water bottle is open or it explodes or whatever, just the water will drip out. Let's do the one liter Nalgene test. Yeah, the one liter Nalgene is, oh. If it does fit, it's a tough fit. Yeah, I'm gonna go with a no on that. But 18 ounce hydro flask, like a glove. There's two side handles, one on each side, super basic. You're not gonna wanna actually carry your bag with this. It's not gonna be comfortable, but it's nice to have an extra grip point as you move the bag around. On the flip side, we have a zip pocket here. This pocket is PU coated and uses a YKK zip, a really nice zipper pull, super smooth zip experience. Then on the inside, we have the key ring solution and some impressive depth. It actually goes all the way down to the bottom here. And I like the material. It's really quite interesting. They used a mesh. Mesh is not too silky, but a little of elasticity to it. It feels like it's going to be durable and robust. 
And I like the key ring solution because it doesn't have that weird little hook problem. Some of these key rings like have a little hook in there. You try to clip it off, you can't do it. This is nice and smooth. Clip it on, clip it off, wax on, wax off, good to go. This could be a good location for something like your sunglasses as they can kind of go down to the bottom. But one thing I don't like is the keys are definitely going to interact with your sunglasses. And I didn't come up with the sunglasses thing by myself. On their website, it shows one of their models putting their shades into this pocket. So I did it and now, I don't know, keys and sunglasses, they don't go hand in hand very well. All right, let's get into the main compartment. And one thing to note is this bag is a top loader. Now top loaders are annoying because you can only access them from the top and everything at the bottom is hard to find. It's like a black hole in there, right? Now other top loaders will have like a side access or a back access. It's important to note though, that this guy doesn't. Your main compartment is accessible through here and that's it. And it's a limited access. It's only gonna go from here to here. So the stuff in the bottom might be a little irritating to find sometimes. Having said that, it is protected by a PU coated YKK zipper. Nice zipping experience, which helps keep your gear dry. Inside the actual main compartment, we have this mesh pocket right here. I like the materials and the overall idea. It's a little small though, and I got little hands in general. So it's a little bit of a tight squeeze to actually get in there. If you got something in the corner there, you get gonna like, it's, it's, it's a process. In the actual main compartment right now, I got a few things packed out. My umbrella, one tech pouch, two tech pouch, that's it. Interesting note is there's no like real internal materials. It's just the other side of the external materials for this gray pack. It is the sailcloth uh, fabric, the x pack material. On the flip side, we have a sleeve pocket right here, stretchy elastic band, and a zip pocket above it. The zip pocket actually has a pretty cool feature where there is a hidden pocket within the zip pocket as you can see right here. Good spot to keep your valuables, maybe a wallet, backup cash, backup credit card, just something that you wanna keep in a secure location in a worst case scenario. Should also be noted that you can access and remove the back foam panel. I wouldn't recommend it as it does help provide some structure and extra comfort in my opinion for the pack, but if you're like, F you back panel, I don't want you, you can easily remove it. And finally, we have another external lash point in the internal part of the bag. Would that make it an internal lash point tab? Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, he's gonna talk about the laptop compartment any second now. I've been waiting for that. I'm not, because one crucial piece of information, there's no laptop compartment. Theoretically, one could probably squeeze a smaller laptop into here. But this is not designed to carry your laptop gear. But what I do love is Able Carry's A-frame build. And what that means is you can see it's kind of like like an A, right? More narrow at the top, wider at the bottom. And it means that as all your stuff goes to the bottom, it kind of packs out a little bit more. So there's actually an impressive capacity, but in a situation that the pack is not packed out, it kind of goes like this. It's neat, it's functional. All Able Carry packs utilize this sort of framework, and I'm a big fan. Let's talk about the back. We got a top handle, same thing on the side handles. It's kind of rough, it's just kind of basic. It's not meant to be carried this way, it's just an extra grip point. Let's talk about the shoulder straps. I like what's going on. These are pretty dense, pretty coarse shoulder straps, but for outdoor and hiking gear, that's what you want. You don't want something super soft and cushiony. You want something that's like robust. So having said that, there's a decent amount of ventilation. I like the material. Moving down the shoulder straps, we have a removable sternum strap right here. And not only is it removable, but it's completely adjustable. You can put it there, you can put it there, you can also put it there. And for you carabiner lovers out there, you can also clip a carabiner onto here. The clip and buckle is made from Duraflex. Duraflex makes some of the best hardware in the backpack game. No dangle stopper though, so this guy will be flapping around a little bit. And finally at the bottom, we've got more nylon. I like this nylon, it's higher quality, it's thicker, it feels more durable. And we do have a dangle stopper here to keep this dangle in its place. Stay. And finally, one last note, as you can see, is there is no back padding on the back panel, which doesn't mean it's necessarily gonna be uncomfortable. I mean, this bag is unbelievably light at 1.2 pounds. And you're probably not gonna carry a ton of stuff on your hike, you know, you wanna keep it light, right? Keep it light, bro. But you are gonna miss out on ventilation. Typically, there might be like an EVA foam padding right here, three-dimensional, so then you get a little breeze through the center of the back and maybe on the sides as well. There's none of that with this, which means on a really hot, sweaty day, this might plaster to your sweaty back. That's it. It's a pretty minimalist bag. 
Let's talk about the pros and the cons. Pro number one, it's light as a feather. 1.2 pounds, probably the lightest backpack I've ever reviewed. Pro number two, simplicity. You're going on hikes. You're not like trying to organize all of your tech gear. Keep it simple, keep it minimalist. That's what this bag does. And pro number three, we're just a big fan of that whole A-frame as to where it looks nice and neat and tidy like this, but as you pack it, things go to the bottom and it builds out on the bottom. It's better for the distribution of weight. It just makes sense. Cons though, limited access to the main compartment is gonna be a little annoying. You just have this little opening and that's it. Stuff at the bottom might be hard to get to. And con number two is going to be the lack of back padding. I don't think it's required, but at this price point, I maybe would have just liked a little something extra to help with the ventilation on those hot, humid, sweaty Hong Kong summer days. So if you're still here, there's a good chance you might be thinking to yourself, but is this the backpack for me? I'm gonna give you my opinion on that. I think this is absolutely the pack for you if you're looking for a great hiking pack. It's at 110 to 120 bucks, it's not too pricey. And these durable materials should last a lifetime. I mean, this X-Pack, it's so water resistant, it's so rip resistant. If you're just looking for a sweet, minimalist, ultra light hiking bag, you found yourself a winner. If that sounds like you and you're gonna make a purchase, we always ask that you use the first link in the description. That link makes sure that you get the best price and it also helps support our channel. This is also going to be a great backpack for you. If you're like, dude, I want a hiking bag, but I want that bag to be just a great everyday carry. I wanna take it to work and to the gym and to the beach and not for it to look like a and like Osprey or Patagonia backpack. I want like a little sense of like urbanness to it. That's what this is. You take it to work, it's gonna look sweet. You wear it on the, you wear it on public transportation, no one's gonna be like, did that man just scale Everest? It's sort of the middle ground between urban and adventure. If that sounds like you and you're gonna make a purchase, we always appreciate if you use the first link in the description. But on the flip side, there's some people that I think can take a pass on it and I'll make a recommendation for an alternative backpack. If you are in need of a backpack that can also carry a laptop, sorry, this probs ain't gonna work. Able Carry Daybreaker told you. If that sounds like you though, don't worry. If you're looking for like an adventure-y, hike -y, outdoorsy backpack that can also carry a laptop, check the links below for an alternative recommendation. This is also not going to be the pack for you. If you're looking for a backpack that is cool, adventure-y, hike -y, but you're looking for more features. This guy is streamlined, minimalist. You got one pocket, two pocket, like a, like a few pockets in a main compartment, that's it. If you're looking for a bit more organization and a bit more features, take a look at the description below. I've got a link to a review for a backpack that is equally as hiker friendly, but a bit more feature heavy. If you found this video useful, the best way to support our channel is to hit the like button and then subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified anytime we do another backpack review. And also, what do you think about the Able Carry Daybreaker? Not enough features? Should the water bottle pocket be bigger? And if you own this pack, let us know how your experience has been so far. Your comments help make our channel a better place so we can all find the pack that's perfect for us. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you next time.